actually um, a combination of books. Um, some of these books were bought on CD. Uh, they're books that are now unfortunately out of print and um, the only way that one I could get hold of them was um, on CD on eBay, I believe I purchased them, and they came in a file format called EPUB. Now you can get all sorts of different electronic formats, but EPUB seems to be an open standard that Apple are choosing to now adopt or have adopted here, um, because as I sort of mentioned in the intro, um, it came in a folder called EPUB and each of the books were listed in there, and all I did was I just dragged those files, dragged them onto, onto um, iTunes on my desktop, and it basically just said importing, put them in as part of my books, and then when I next synced them up, they were there. Um, the covers seem a little bit odd for some of these. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I'm not complaining. They're there, and I have, those, I have access to those books. Now, as we can see up here in the top left-hand corner, I've got a book. Now, I neither um, purchased and imported this via iTunes, um, nor purchased it, as in bought it uh, through iTunes. What I actually did was I was able to download this for free from the um, Gutenberg project, which currently has something like 30,000 books that have been scanned, imported, and turned into a digital format. Um, essentially, the reason that they're able to do that and get away with that, not get away with it, the reason they're able to do that is because those books are now. Um, old enough that they've actually sort of gone out of copyright, no one owns the individual copyright to those books, and so it's possible to share those um, with everybody and to be able to have access to those, to, to those for free. So what we can now do is let's go in and take a look at the store itself. So you can see the bookshelf uh, rotates and what we're going to now do is be taken online to the, um, basically to the bookstore. So we've got, uh, as, as you would expect, Apple are advertising books that you can download and purchase. Um, and there, I'll be honest with you, there aren't actually a huge amount of books on here. There are a few that um, I'm going to be looking to want to buy um, to take on holiday with me. And I'm certainly going to be giving that a go. But there, there, there aren't an amazing amount of books yet. But I'm sure that's going to change. Um, what we do have access to is the charts, and the charts is quite good, I quite like this. So what you've got is you've got top paid books um, and top free books. So you can obviously see that um, on the right hand side, we can see the top free books are Winnie the Pooh, because obviously everybody has access to that um, for free, and then you'll be able to see all these other books. Now a lot of these, as you can see, are well, they're, they're classic books. I mean, we've got Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island, Pride and Prejudice from Jane Austen, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Um, there are literally loads and loads and loads of books. Um, Sherlock Holmes, great classics, books that, to be honest with you, uh, they're timeless, and they're always going to be timeless, um, and that's why I guess we keep revisiting them as both in printed format, um, and again, that's why I guess they make time and time again remakes of, of these stories as films, because they do genuinely stand the test of time. So definitely worth your while taking a look at um, and downloading some of these. Um, I've just seen that there's, uh, from Apple, there's an iPad user's guide. So what we're going to do is let's download this. Um, so I've clicked on it, it says free, so it says get book. And as you can see, what it's now doing is it's offering to put that into my uh, book collection. It's prompting me for a password. So this is my password for the store. Uh, now obviously I'm going to be uh, blocking that out. And the book should now be, there we go, we can see it like an application when we download and install applications for the iPad. Um, we've got this little uh, bar that's going across here and it's done and it's telling us that this is a new book for us to look at. So let's take a look at it. I've downloaded it, I've installed it. Uh, it's now in my uh, in my library. We can see that it's loading in the book and as you would expect, you're getting an introduction to the iPad uh, all 300 pages of it. So all the information about the iPad, about I guess how to use it, 
Um, let's go to the table of contents and we can see in here, oh, they've even referenced to iBooks and about using iBooks. Um, so yeah, a great access to reference material about the actual iPad itself in book format. So let's go back to the library and there we go, we can see that is my library and I think this is something that more and more I'm going to take advantage of and use. I know that uh, I think in, in, a, in the last episode I mentioned that my wife uh, has an iPad. She's an avid reader. She will consume books at a huge, huge rate. Um, just didn't believe um, before getting access to uh, the, the Kindle and the iPad that it would work in digital format and she's completely won over by it. She still likes the tactile feel of a real book. Um, but there are so many books that are classics and that are hard to get hold of that she can get in electronic format that she can keep on here, carry around with her and she says it's perfectly usable and she's been able to read it for hours at a time. So I think this really will um, hopefully start to take books in a completely new direction. I guess what they need to start working on is the price of these electronic books because uh, quite often they're way over and above the cost of a printed book and there's no there's no paper, there's no distribution to speak of. So they really need to start addressing some of this pricing and getting these books down in cost. Okay, well I think that pretty much sums up iBooks and uh, a look at iBooks. So I hope you enjoyed that and I hope to see you next time. Bye.